Hello and welcome to Pokemon Horizons, episode 32 review. So this is a follow-up to last week's episode where the Rising Volt Tactics have encountered Lapras. Lapras and his friends get into a brief struggle against the Rising Volt Tactics and end up having to retreat. But we get the most exhilarating part of the episode as Ludlow sails a ship while under assault from Pokemon blasting water attacks. It's pretty sick to see how him and Quagsire work in tandem to avoid danger, and just in general it's a really nice looking animated sequence. I can't imagine it's easy to do water effects and it gives Ludlow something a bit more reasonable to do. What I really like here is how Lapras decides to take charge and to stop the Bravia Sagi itself, freezing it in an incredibly powerful looking ice beam. You can really see its power as it kind of just rams into Bravia Sagi and lifts the front out of the sea for a minute. So we can't really pursue by sailing anymore, which is definitely a problem in the sea, but Liko comes up with a pretty good plan as she sees that various assorted berry crates litter the ocean, which does feel a little convenient for leading them to where Lapras and the Pokemon live, but at least it makes Liko feel a little bit more proactive in tracking Lapras down, which I can respect for sure. As expected, Freed has flew the kids over to their home. Lapras ain't too happy about that, but it doesn't attack right away. You could kind of just talk no jutsu's Lapras, pointing out that Terrapa goes to them and wants to go to Rakua, invoking Lucius's name, which which I consider to be the most interesting part of the episode as Moltres and Arbolever come out their Pokeballs. We're shown a vision of the past as Lucius has promised his Pokemon they'd all meet again in Rakua. That feels crazy to me to think we can potentially see a character who's lived for so long show up in a modern capacity. It really makes me wonder how Rakua could even provide that sort of capability for him and why his Pokemon would even be set across the world, because he does specifically promise them that he would be alive when he sees them again. It's definitely very interesting. And shortly after we get Lapras deciding to join the Rising Volt Tactics in their mission, as much like Moltres and our believer, it had promised Terrapagos and Lucius that it returned to Rakua, with his Pokemon friends cheering it on, and he hands it to an ancient Pokeball. The wild Pokemon won't even have to change their way of life, as Well Lord can also use Mist, and it leaves them in good hands. The final twist of this episode being that as Roy says they're closer to Rayquaza, it actually shows up. So yeah, I think this is an okay episode. Didn't really end up having much in the way of action as I thought it would, but it's a very interesting episode and kind of a wider scale of things for me, as it marks the halfway point for having gathered six heroes of course, but it also teases a bigger development in Lucius' story as he could potentially still be alive, and it sets up Rayquaza making a proper re-emergence for the first time since 706. After all this time chasing Rayquaza, he's found them instead, and I wonder if that's because the heroes are starting to be more gathered en masse and what we have potentially mean for it showing up. Ludlow does kind of steal the show, however, with his sailing and quagsire, but also kind of becomes irrelevant as all it really ends up doing is getting Lapras to attack and disable the ship as much as it can. But it was also nice getting to see all the working way in the engine room. As I said last week, everyone kind of has their role to play in finding Lapras, and that's great. Is it a cop out that just happens to be enough boxes to like lead the rising rock attackers to Lapras' home? Probably, but I think it was probably worth skipping the search for Lapras' home just to have more actual interaction between it and the cast. Seeing it have a defensive attitude but gradually opening up as it realises that there's no harm intended to it and the other Pokemon, and that these guys know Lucius, Rakua, Terrapagos, and of course I believe in Moltres is quite nice. In terms of the six heroes, I'd say this is the weakest episode when it comes to befriending it, but I certainly enjoyed it regardless. 